Hello, my precious friends. I really hope that you are doing great. Welcome to our today's class. It is our third lesson on the second topic of Form 4, which is called Uniform Circular Motion. As usual, let me commence by giving the quote of the day, which states that your future depends on your present actions. We shall discuss that quote at the end of our class today. So today we're looking at examples of um, motion in a circle and the agents that provide the centripetal force in each case. And the first uh, example of motion in a circle or example of uniform circular motion with the agent that provides the centripetal force is that when we have a stone at one end of a string which is whirled in a horizontal circle or basically what we call the conical pendulum, then in such a case the agent that provides the centripetal force is the tension in that particular string. So the tensional force in the string is the agent that provides the centripetal force for the case of a conical pendulum or for the case of a stone or an object which is tied at the end of a string or maybe a thread and whirled in a horizontal circle. To whirl is simply to rotate a body in either a vertical or a horizontal circle but for this case you are specifically talking of a horizontal circle. In such case uh, the agent that provides centripetal force is the tensional force in that particular string. Then um, the second case is that when the earth is orbiting the sun, that is when the earth is uh, going around the sun or not necessarily just the earth, any other planet, for example, even Jupiter or Saturn or even Mars or Mercury, when it is orbiting or when it is rotating around the sun, then the agent that provides the centripetal force or the agent that keeps that particular planet rotating in a circular path around that particular sun is simply the gravitational attraction offered by that particular sun. So the gravitational force or the gravitational attraction offered by the sun is the agent that provides the centripetal force for the earth or any other planet which is orbiting the sun. Then the third case is a car rounding a circular bend. So the agent that provides the centripetal force in such a case is the frictional force between the tires and that particular rod. Remember, when there is no friction, that particular vehicle will simply slide off. Yeah, so you need the frictional force between uh, the rod and the tires in order for that particular vehicle or car to, to be maintained rotating in a circular path or in a circular bend. So whenever you have a car or even a lorry or any other type of uh, maybe vehicle or uh, yeah, any other type of vehicle rounding a circular bend or going round a circular path, then in such a case, the frictional force between the tires of that particular car and of course the rod will be the agents that provide the centripetal force. Then uh, the centripetal force is always directed towards the center of that particular curvature. Therefore, in this particular case, because we are saying that uh, the centripetal force is provided by the frictional force, it simply means that in this case, the frictional force FR will always be equal to the centripetal force, which is FC. And we know that for any horizontal motion, then the centripetal force will always be given by the product of the mass times the square of the velocity divided by uh, the radius. Therefore, the frictional force will be equal to the centripetal force, which is equal to mv squared over R, of course, which can as well be given by other formulas, for example, m omega squared R. So if the rod is slippery, remember when the rod is slippery, this simply means that the frictional force is very low. Remember, one of the ways of reducing friction is by smoothening the surface. So if the rod is slippery, that simply means the frictional force is very low, then the frictional force may not be sufficient to provide the centripetal force. As a result, skidding may occur or the vehicle is likely, is likely to uh, slide off that particular rod. Therefore, to prevent skidding, the car should not exceed a certain speed limit, which we are calling the critical speed. So the vehicle or that particular car should move in such a way that it is moving within a particular speed. That is, it should not exceed a certain speed. If it moves at extremely very high speed, then it will skid off that particular rod or it will slide off from that particular rod. Therefore, to prevent skidding, the car should be uh, should not exceed a certain uh, speed limit, which we are calling the critical speed. And this critical speed will always depend on the radius of the bend or the radius uh, of the bend of that particular circular path or that particular circular rod. 
Then um, four, we look at the um, aircraft taking a corner at a very high speed or simply aircraft banging. So remember when we talk of aircraft, we are simply talking of uh, the aeroplane. So even if when an aeroplane is taking a corner at a very high speed or when an aircraft or an aeroplane is banging, then the agent that provides the centripetal force in that case is the air resistance acting on the wings of that particular uh, aircraft is what provides the centripetal force. Remember, if there was no air resistance, that, uh, that particular aircraft will not be in a position to take the corner safely. Therefore, you need air resistance uh, to be acting on the wings of that particular aircraft in order for it to bang or for it to take the corner effectively. Then five, we look at um, a cyclist moving around a circular track. And in this case, the agent that provides the centripetal force, one is the component of the normal reaction acting between um, the center of that particular circle. Remember when you talk of the components of normal reaction, you are talking of the action and the reaction forces. Of course, action is provided by the weight of that particular um, uh, cyclist. And of course, the reaction will always be provided by the, um, the ground on which that particular weight is being acted on. Therefore, the components that provide the centripetal force for the case of a cyclist moving around a circular track is simply the components of normal reaction acting uh, toward the center of the circle is what provides the centripetal force. If you want to find the frictional force in this case, it will always be given by mg the turn of theta, where m is the mass of that particular cyclist, of course, g is the gravity, and theta is the angle of bending uh, from the center of that particular circular track. Then six, we look at a vehicle on a banked road. Remember, banked road is just um, a circular road. For example, when a, a, a certain vehicle is uh, taking maybe a corner or climbing a certain hill, such roads we talk the, we talk about uh, banging of the roads. A banked road is a road uh, when, for example, the vehicle is climbing a hill. The road is usually constructed in such a way that it is winding along that particular hill upward. So that is what we are calling banking of the tracks or the road. So a vehicle on a banked road, what provides the centripetal force is the angle of banking and of course the components of the normal reaction acting on that particular vehicle is what contributes or provides the centripetal force. So for a given, um, for a given banking angle theta, the critical speed can be obtained from the equation v. So v is the critical speed or velocity, which will be equal to the square root of rg, the term of theta. Of course, where r is the radius of that particular uh, banking rod from the center. That is from the yeah from the center. G of course is gravity. Then theta is the angle of banking. Next, we look at motion in a vertical circle. So I want you to imagine having a stone in your hand, which is uh, tied on a string or on a thread, which is being whirled or rotated in a vertical circle. That is from point A to point B to point C to point D back to point A. So of course, this is where you are holding your string or the center of rotation. Then of course, the radius of this particular circle will be equal to the length of your string. Then of course, this is where your object or the stone is. So the object or the stone is being rotated or whirled from point A to point B to point C to point D, then back to that particular point A. So the tension in the string will always vary depending on the position of the object. So at the highest point of the circle, that is at point A, the tension in the string is minimum. So when the stone is at the highest point, of that particular vertical motion, the tension in that particular string will always be minimum. Why? Because remember that particular object or the stone also has its own weight. And we know that the weight will always act downwards because weight depends on gravity, which will always force objects to move towards the center of the earth. So it's like the weight of that particular stone is trying to oppose the vertical movement of that particular stone or that particular object. So because the weight is acting downwards and we want our stone to rotate in a vertical manner, so when the stone or the object is at the highest point and the weight is acting downwards, so it's trying to oppose that particular motion. Therefore, the tension in the string at point A, so that is at the highest point of that particular vertical circle, will be given by 
mv squared over r, then we subtract the weight of that particular object because the weight will always act downwards, trying to oppose uh, the vertical uh, standing or the vertical motion of that particular object which is being whirled in a vertical circle. Remember from our previous classes, we also said that the tension can as well be given by uh, mv squared, uh, that is m omega squared times r, of course where m is the mass of the stone or the object, omega is the angular velocity of the rotation, then r is the radius of the path. So the distance from the center up to uh, the circumference of that particular circle. Therefore the tension at, of, in the string at point A can as well be given by m omega squared r minus mg. So it is at this position that a certain minimum speed must be maintained in order to keep the string taut, that is to keep the string in a vertical manner. Remember, if you reduce the speed of rotation, this particular stone will fall downwards and therefore the vertical circle will not be maintained when that particular stone or the object is at point A. So there is a certain minimum speed that must be maintained in your hand as you rotate that particular stone in a vertical circle in order to keep the string taut or to keep the string in a vertical way or uh, being in a straight line as shown in this particular diagram. So for us to find this minimum velocity, so we assume that the tension at point A being equal to zero. So that particular minimum velocity can only be attained when the tension in the string at point A is zero, such that this particular object will fall downwards. So when the tension in the string at point A is equal to zero, the formula, which was Ta is equal to uh, mv squared over r minus mg, will simply be given by tension at point A is equal to mv squared over r minus mg, then which is equal to zero. So when the tension in the string at point A is equal to zero, that is when the minimum velocity is actually determined. Therefore, this equation, I can simply take mv squared over r minus mg being equal to zero, as shown in this particular equation. Then I want to take mg towards the right hand side so that it becomes a positive. If you take 0 plus mg, you'll just get mg. Therefore, we have mv squared over r being equal to mg. Remember, our aim is to find the minimum velocity or the speed. Therefore, I make v subject of the formula by, I want to remove m and r from the left hand side. Therefore, I'll multiply both sides by the reciprocal of m over r. Of course, the reciprocal of m over r is simply r over m. Therefore, v squared is equal to mg times r over m. So, of course, mass and mass will cancel out so that we remain with v squared being equal to rg. Of course, where r is the radius and g is the gravity. If I take, if I take square roots on both sides, I'll simply end up having v being equal to the square root of rg. Therefore, v, which is the minimum uh, velocity or the minimum speed that must be maintained for the body, uh, that is for the string to remain taut, the minimum velocity or minimum speed will be given by the square root of rg. Therefore, this speed must be maintained in order for the spring to be taut. Otherwise, if you rotate that particular stone below the minimum uh, required speed, then that stone cannot rotate in a vertical manner. So at the points B and D, so you can see this point B and at point D, the stone is in a horizontal position or it is moving along the x-axis. Therefore, it is an, uh, on a horizontal position. And remember, the weight will always act vertically. The weight can only act along the y-axis or the vertical axis. Therefore, when the stone or when the body is at point D and at point B or at horizontal positions, no weight acts on those particular bodies or the weight does not affect the tension in that particular string. So at point B and D, the weight of the body acts downwards, uh, hence mg is equal to zero. The reason being the weight only acts vertically. Therefore, when the body is in horizontal positions, that is at positions D and at position B, then the weight does not affect the tension in that particular string because um, the weight acts vertically, but the tension is acting in this case horizontally. Therefore, mg is equal to zero. Thus, the tension at point B will be equal to the tension at point D because they are both in horizontal circles and mg is equal to zero. Therefore, the tension at point B is equal to the tension at point D, which is equal to mv squared over r, which can as well be given by tension at point B is equal to tension at point D, which is equal to m omega squared r. So we are not adding or subtracting the weight because at point B and at point D, the body is in horizontal motion, but the weight only acts 
vertically. That is the way it will only act when the body is along the y-axis or the vertical axis, but not at the x-axis. Remember, weight depends on gravity, and gravity acts vertically, but not horizontally. That is not that is why we are not adding or subtracting weight from this particular formula when the body is in horizontal positions. So at the lowest point of the circle, that is at point C, as you can see from this particular diagram, tension in the string is maximum. Why? Because when the body is at this particular point C, the weight is acting downward. Therefore, the tension in the spring will be the sum of the tension at point B, of course, plus the weight of that particular body. Remember, when the body is at this particular point, it is moving in the same direction as the weight of that particular body. So it's like the weight is adding. Uh, uh, the total force acting on the body at point C is the tension in the string, which is being acted by the hand, plus the weight of that particular body, because we know that the weight acts downwards or vertically. So at point C, uh, the tension in the string is maximum. That is, the tension at point C is equal to mv squared over r plus mg. That is the weight of the body, which can as well be given by tension at point C is equal to m omega squared r plus mg, or the weight of that particular um, object which is being whirled. Therefore, the string is most likely to snap at this particular point. To snap is simply, um, that is, to cut off from the main path or from that particular string. So at point C, that is when or where uh, the string is likely to snap or to cut off because the force acting on it is actually maximum because the force acting on it is the tension in the string plus the weight of that particular body. So you can be asked to state the position where the string is likely to snap. So it will be at point C. The reason being at point C, the body is experiencing the maximum possible uh, force, which is the tension in the string plus the weight of that particular body. So we come to the end of our class today, but we need to discuss the quote of the day. The quote of the day stated that your future depends on your present actions. So the quote is reminding us about the impact of our present actions on our future success. Therefore, no matter how small your actions might seem to be, it is always advisable to first examine their long-term effects before executing those particular actions. And lastly, recall that taking responsibility for your actions is a universe is a universal language which is spoken by all successful people in the world. So this one simply means that if you want to be successful, you must learn to take responsibility for your actions. Thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson. I do not take it for granted. In case you are new to the channel, kindly hit the subscription button and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever I upload a new video, you'll get notified. So we'll be applying these particular formulas in our next lesson. Until next time, this is Kind Tuition Academy. Thank you very much for the continued support. I really, really appreciate.